Um, everybody's doing, every startup is now attacking large companies. You, people used to be dominant suppliers for decades are now finding that they're being chased by, you know, uh, new entrants who never existed before. So large companies are also struggling to do what we call continuous innovation. And for corporations who were set up to be execution machines, having to figure out how to do innovation is incredibly difficult inside that structure. So now we have another type of startup, which is uh, corporate, corporate, entrepreneurs. corporate entrepreneurs. And by the way, I'll throw in social entrepreneurs, NGOs, as another category. So why I say this is this is for both investors, for entrepreneurs, for government, for educators. When you're talking about entrepreneurship, you should be asking, so which one am I investing in? Mm -hmm. And I should also be asking, you know, how do I want to support them? And what's the right tools? And what's the right investment strategy? Mm -hmm. Now, we see more and more entrepreneurs, and what we see with the entrepreneurs is, of course, failure. Um, great majority fail. Now, the stigma around failures in Turkey is quite different from that in the U.S. Yes. because of cultural and historical reasons. Uh, what is the importance or significance of failures? Could you perhaps excite us a little bit about failures? You know what we call a failed entrepreneur in the United States? Special word in English. Do you know what we call them? You know? Experience. Experience, yeah. It's a big idea. It's, it's a huge idea. Um, in, you know you're in the right entrepreneurial cluster, and that is Silicon Valley's a cluster, New York's a cluster, um, London, Stockholm, Berlin, Herzlum, hopefully Istanbul, is where a failed entrepreneur doesn't shame their family, doesn't shame their community, and in fact, after they, and like everybody, failure isn't good, it feels horrible. I've failed four times. Um, but you know you're in a successful cluster when your best friend has coffee with you and his first question is, so what's your next startup? It's a big idea. And your investors not only call you back, they're asking the same question. Um, this is a cultural thing because people confuse startups with existing companies. Mm -hmm. An existing company, a failure was, well, wait a minute, you were supposed to execute a known business model and you failed. You screwed that up. Yeah. Right? The job spec was understood. Yeah. You know, you had customers, you lost that. How did you do that? A startup is a whole series of unknowns. And in fact, I want to remind the audience, how many of you are founders? Founders. How, come on. More, really? More. More. All right. Turns out that whatever your career was in the past, you've just given it up. Because the founder, a founder of a company, is closer to an artist than any other profession. If you think about an artist, a sculptor, a painter, a composer, they see something that no one else sees. They hear something that no one else sees. They start with a blank canvas or a blank score sheet. And at first, they're the only one who can envision or hear what there is. Beethoven was deaf, right, when he did the, the Ninth Symphony. And somehow, through their passion and vision, they're able to convince other people to join them to kind of practice this piece or look at this blank sheet or, or you know, look at this block of marble and believe there'll be a beautiful sculpture here. And they also can convince investors to give them money for some quest. But just like artists, sometimes they fail. Um, and, and we don't shoot artists because they made a bad painting. They just go do another one. Um, and, and much like artists, um, we know how to teach artists. We've learned during the Renaissance. We teach them some theory, perspective, color, etc. But then we give them a ton of hands-on and practice, experiential. And this is what we missed with entrepreneurship education is that we confused it. This is back to your initial MBA question of sitting in the class and doing case studies. You don't do case studies for painting. You actually you go, go out, out and paint. Get out of the and, building. And for entrepreneurship, and this is back to the failure thing, the failure is actually equals experience, not failure. You don't paint one painting and end up you know, with a masterpiece. You no. paint lots of paintings. Um, and so this, this is part of the education of the greater community that a failure in a startup is not the same as the failure in a large corporation. 
And success is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. There we go. A Churchill said. A Churchill's comment. Yeah. I, I tell my students that a, uh, a startup Except could... Except that Gallipoli. Except, Except that Gallipoli, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ran against a tough, uh, yeah. tough enemy there. Uh, I tell my students that an entrepreneur will never fail. A startup could fail, but the probability of failure goes down with every new attempt. And eventually... So this goes back to the passion of an artist. This is where I, I keep using that analogy. Being an artist is the world's most miserable job. You would never do it for the money. If you were doing it for the money, you're doing the wrong profession. You do it for the passion. And it's the same as doing it as a founder. You will be, for sure, encountering times where your co-founder has just quit, your largest customer just told you they changed their mind, and your best employee just left, and that was just Tuesday. Mm. Um, I've had that happen. And if you're thinking that entrepreneurship is a job, you will give up. For those of you who want to be entrepreneurs because you're thinking it's cool, you're confused. Entrepreneurship is not a job, it's a calling. It's a calling. If you don't hear the voice in your head that says, I can't imagine not doing anything else but this, go take a job somewhere else until you get tired of it and hear that voice. And I'm not talking about employees. Employees of a startup are different. But the founders have to be called for this mission of wanting to do something and they can't imagine. Can't, and and they just can't believe that there's actually such a career. It's just like, again, being called to being a painter or a composer. You can't imagine doing anything else. I did this for 21 years in Silicon Valley as a practicing entrepreneur. And I can't tell you how many times driving to work, I was wondering if they were going to make me pay to work there because I enjoyed it. So I couldn't believe I could actually have a job like inventing new things and, and learning new stuff and getting paid to kind of create things. And, you know, most of the time failing. Um, in fact, my last, next to last company, I was on the cover of Wired magazine. I don't know if they still have Wired. They used to, it used to be something they killed dead trees and put ink on it and published magazine. And, um, and, and uh, I raised $35 million. And 90 days after I was on the cover of Wired, I realized I was going out of business. Going out of business. And the company eventually failed. And I had to call my mother. And my mother was a Russian immigrant. And English was never her first language. So every time I spoke to her, there was a pause as she translated in her head. And I said, Mom, I lost $35 million. Pause, translate. And she said, where'd you put it? <laughs> I, I, I said, no, 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 I lost it. It's all gone. Pause, longer pause. <laughs> and then she said, oh, oh my gosh, the country we came from is gone. There was nowhere for us to go. <laughs> And then she got smarter, and then she said, and our name is blank. We can't even change it. Um, I said, no, no, no. The people who gave me the, the, the money, uh, the reason I'm calling you, just gave me another $12 million to do my next startup. And there was like, clunk. I, I thought she fell to the ground, and she had dropped the phone. And she said, oh, they always told me the streets were paved with gold in the United States. Um, and the reason I tell the story is not a Steve Blank story. Uh, by the way, the, the, that story had an interesting ending. The people gave me the $12 million. I returned a billion dollars each. Is that epiphany? Investors. It was epiphany. A billion dollars each um, to those investors. And, and that's not a Steve Blank story. That is an entrepreneurial mm -hmm. cluster story. That is, that's failure and redemption. A and in fact, wow. you know, I worked harder, but, and by the way, that failure did not feel good. Failure does not feel good. When people say fail fast and, and failure is fine, I don't know what they're talking about because failure is still pretty miserable. It's just the culture allows you to get up again, which is one of the characteristics of great entrepreneurs is you are resilient. If you are not resilient, if you cannot eventually bounce back, you're in the wrong business again. And the passion of being an entrepreneur is what gets you off the ground again.